ラフェチさん住みようかずワンミネってフィロソフィー Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is metaphysics? It is ontology, not the study of what exists, but the study of what is existence. At first, it was in addition to Aristotle's physics, although after that, it comes to be regarded as a higher independent field than physics. What's it all about? Aristotle was a student of Plato's school. However, he disliked Plato's theory that Real things are good, only if they are similar to the eternal e d i u s If so, a muscular boy would be the only good human being, while any child, any woman, and any agent could not be good. He inquired about existence itself, and found that being is changing. Huli is a substance without a certain form, it dresses a temporal appearance, Eidos, and it is changing them. For example, an apple was green, but becomes red, and will be rotten brown. The whole of changing is existence. What do you think? No one can be forever young. Everyone must go someday senile. It is the real figure of human existence. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Rafechi san, Sumioka, the one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is alchemy? It is a method, applying Aristotle's metaphysics, to change and make things. What's it all about? Things are made of Yuli and Eidos, namely, materials and forms. However, even if you put a form on material, they stay apart. So, Aristotle thought that, for the metamorphosis, they need also, an agent cause, and, a purpose cause. For example, even when you put a plant on wood, nothing happens. Only when they are given a constructor and a client, a house is made. That means, materials and forms are just in dunamis, or, the possible mode. When agents and purposes take part, they go as e n e r g a r or, the actual mode. In the end, the state where the material has been combined with the form, is e n t e l i c a r or, the completed mode. The acro alchemy had even tried to change materials and make noble metals. According to Aristotle, every material is made of four hypostases, namely, air, fire, water, and mud. He said, if we could rightly operate their dryness and wetness, or their hotness and coolness, we could change them and make any materials. What do you think? If it does not go well for you, it would be. Because you cannot combine yourself with your dream. I wonder if you happen to lack the agent cause or the purpose cause, namely, yourself. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Rafechi san, Su Mioka, the one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is conduct philosophy? It is skepticism. Hedonism, and Stoicism. Ancient Rome had a giant territory that covered all of the Mediterranean world and that contained a wide variety of nations and cultures. They were ostensibly cosmopolitans without prejudices and reserves. However, actually, they were full of envy, plots, and assassinations. So, they had to consider how they should get along with the world. What's it all about? Skepticism is to make no decision, to trust nothing, to pass everything, in order not to be hated by others. Hedonism is to concentrate on one's own peace and to concern oneself with nothing of the world. So, they advocated hiding life, ratabiosis. Stoicism is to be satisfied with one's present situation without asking for any more happiness. They thought everything is already enough. Outer Achaia. What do you think? Even in our time, diversity is just a public catchword. When people find one who has a little difference, they hate him and turn him out at once. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Rafechi san, Su Mioka, the one minute philosophy. 
Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is Salmon on the Mount? It is the core doctrine of Jesus' conduct philosophy. In the age of cosmopolitanism and assassination, not life ways to avoid the world, but he advocated, a new life way with God, rather to touch positively on the world, and talked on paradox of the gospel, fulfillment of the Torah, and analogy between God and man. What's it all about? Paradox of the gospel is, the good news, that, unfortunate persons are rather happy, because they can find unfortunate people, and help them, as God's servants. Fulfillment of the Torah is, the order, not only to keep it slickly, but also to do it positively, with understanding God's intention. And, analogy between God and man is, that, you should save people, as same as God does. In short, even if God exists or not, when everybody becomes God's servant, and does the work on God's behalf, then, God actually appears in the world. It is a brand new method of religion. What do you think? Even if you pray to God for your selfish greed, it would never come true. It would be much happier, to live to make God's hope into practice. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Professor Su Yonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is the Trinity? It is the essence of Christianity, that, the same God appears in front of us, as different three persons, namely, Father the Creator, Son the Expiator, and, Holy Ghost the Savior. What's it all about? Originally, the God of Judaism is, the one, that created the world, and set us the Torah. As a sect of Judaism, Jesus taught, when we understand the meaning of the Torah, Holy Ghost comes into us, and we can save people. And, after Jesus' execution, Paul began to advocate a new doctrine, that, Jesus is the very God. So, the followers wrangled about God, which is a true God. The Creator, the Savior, or, the Expiator? However, around 200 AD, they thought out a quibble, that, the absurd is indeed worth believing, the three are, in fact, just one. Thus, they took various parties in, and established Christianity. On the contrary, whether new or old, the parties that do not admit Trinity, are not approved as authentic Christianity, even if they are based on the doctrine of Jesus or Paul. What do you think? One who wrangles about God, is forgetting, who one is. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Professor Su Yonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is original sin? It is, the radical guilt of all human beings. We are not omniscient, and, omnipotent. Nevertheless, we pretend to know all, will dogmatically label everything as right or wrong, and wreck it all up. What's it all about? God took five days, to make the diorama of the world. On the sixth day, he put in it, his own figures, Imargo Day, namely, we human beings. He had given everything each mission, for example, birds should fly in the sky, and, fishes should swim in the sea, so that, while taking a rest on the seventh day, a good world would be finished by itself. However, we human beings abused divine freedom, and ate the fruit of wisdom. So, while not understanding the providence, or, God's grand plan, we confuse the world, and distress ourselves. Scores of times, God addressed human beings, to get back into the providence, although we did not care. Eventually, God himself came into his diorama as a human being, showed us the human mission again, and there to be executed, to expiate our sin. Roman Catholics says, it was Jesus. What do you think? Even if it sounds like dissonance at a moment, it may be needed for the symphony. If you touch on something only with half knowledge, you must be involved in trouble later. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Professor Su Yonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? 
Professor Su Yonka, what is heroic here? It is the European medieval society, where religion absolutely ruled. After the secular Roman Empire had been ruined, Roman Catholics bundled the countries and the cities of the piecemeal tribes. What's it all about? The Roman Empire was confused by the great migrations of the Germanic people since 375, and it finally abandoned the west side. People realized the end of the world. The church said, extra ecclesia, nullus salus, no salvation outside the church, and called on them to come in it to prepare for the last judgment. Thus, it became a common universal organization, namely, Catholic, and performed as the administration, instead of the empire. The system where the popes were the top, was called hierarchia, holy governance. However, Roman Catholics believed in the dogma of original sin, by the fruit of wisdom, so, it did not like people thinking things by themselves. So, it demanded them, to be simple, tolerant, and devoted, just as it ordered, and it oppressively controlled, not only people, but also royalty. In short, the church forced all people, to be obedient and lethargic monks, and changed the world, to a jail of yet not judged prisoners. The era was called the Dark Ages, and it lasted for 700 years, in vain. What do you think? I do not consider progress as happiness, but, I hate a dogmatic religion too. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what is Islam? It is, the devotion to the one and only God. Although, the Middle East had been polytheism, a new monotheism derived, from Judaism and Christianity, in the 7th century. It at once spread out, from West Africa, to Southeast Asia. What's it all about? According to it, the successive prophets from Moses to Jesus, could not tell God's thought well. So, God again sent Muhammad as a new one, and entrusted him with concrete rules of daily life, as Quran. It is the handy word of God, and anyone can anywhere come directly close to God with it. Differently from Judaism and Christianity, it denies, original sin. Lenient God has forgiven Adam and Eve, far from that, blesses all humankind. However, we must not touch, on music, fine art, gambling, alcohol, and pork, maybe because these are, what we make for ourselves. We should rather enjoy, without stint, nature that God gave us. Muslims, the Islam believers, increased, more and more. They interacted and traded all over the world, with unified religion, language, and culture. Thus, they established the Golden Ages, against the European Dark Ages. What do you think? In recent years, people rashly put forward diversity, however, a common culture is still important, for communication. Professor Su Yonka, I got it well, thanks. Hi, how do you do? Professor Su Yonka, what are the Crusades? They are the European expeditions to the Orient, since 1096. They said, they would take back the Holy Land into Christians, but, they broke even into the Christian Byzantin. Namely, they were just invasive immigrants. What's it all about? While Islam had been enjoying the Golden Age, Europe also increased its population by 20%, with winter wheat, that Romans left there. In addition, the Normans came with battleships, and conquered even the Mediterranean. For this situation, the Pope urged them, to make expeditions to the East, in order to abandon the excess European population, with new coming Normans. Islam without the Central, could not at once react, against the invasion by Europeans and Normans. So, at first, the Crusaders too easily plundered Jerusalem. However, in the latter part of the 12th century, the Oriental Absolute Monarch, Saladin, appeared, and drove off them. Furthermore, in the 13th century, Asian Genghis Khan, established the Mongolian Empire, and it contrarily intruded on East Europe. Thus, in 1291, 
the Crusaders lost the East Land, and had to turn to West Islam in Iberia, and barely conquer it. After that, they directly sailed out, to invade Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and the New Continent. What do you think? European, including American, repeatedly try to expand their control into the world, with faking various reasons. The world has been greatly annoyed by them, and such ambitions always fail absolutely. I wonder, how long it takes, until they become conscious of their own hubris. Professor Suyonka, I got it well, thanks. Rohichi san Suyonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Suyonka, what is the dance of death? It is European nihilism, in the 14th century, after the Crusades. In addition to the battle losing, the Crusaders had brought home, the East Plagues. Even the church could not save people, and, people imagined the dancing death. What's it all about? Due to the wide interaction and commerce, Islam had high risk, to catch the plagues. Nevertheless, it managed them, by washing the face and the mouth, even the arms and the legs, before every worship five times a day. On the other hand, the Europeans and the Normans, who had a nomadic life before for a long time, were not aware of hygiene, even in town. So, the soldiers returned from the Crusades, in a flash made plagues spread, and the half population was lost. Not only the commons, but also the clergy and the nobility, died without mercy. The church could do nothing, on the contrary, it became rather the place where plagues spread. So, people gave up faith as hopeless, imagined instead the dancing death, which would bring them to the tombs, and express the figures in art and music. What do you think? I often hear of the worldwide economic disparity, however, leaving poverty as it is, causes plagues, and plagues kill the wealthy too. Professor Suyonka, I got it well, thanks. Rohichi-san Suyonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Suyonka, what is the Renaissance? Originally, it meant, the reconstruction of classical culture. However, retrospectively, it was, the revitalization of humanity and reality. What's it all about? The church had negated real human beings, as foul with original sin. But, when it was weakened, by the failure of the Crusades and the spread of plagues, many geniuses and heroes appeared, and affirmed humanity and reality. Already in the latter half of the 14th century, immediately after plagues, Petrarch of Avignon, and Boccaccio of Florence, praised romance in poems and stories. In Burgundy, vulgar chivalry, caught on. In Florence and other cities, bankers like the House of Medici, emerged. In the 15th century of Florence, Brunelleschi suggested, Arch and Dome of Roman style, and Donatello also began realistic statues of Roman style. In Burgundy, Dufay, made polyphonic folk songs. After the Byzantine Empire had been ruined in 1453, and many refugees had come into Florence, Ficino translated complete works of Plato, and Botticelli painted pictures of Greek mythology, especially of the beauty of a woman. In the latter half of the 15th century, Bramante and da Vinci ran about Florence, Milan and Rome, and succeeded in engineering, architecture and fine art. And at the end of the 15th century, Columbus of Spain discovered the new continent, and da Gama of Portugal reached the real India. On the other hand, the declining church tried to brace the hierarchia, with which hunting, However, it could not stop the changing ages. What do you think? Even how strongly religion rules people, geniuses, and heroes, are individuals, so that, they can fly out, into the new age. Professor Suyonka, I got it well, thanks. Rohichi-san Suyonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Suyonka, what is the Protestant Reformation? Against the medieval hierarchy of Roman Catholics, Luther, Calvin, and Henry VIII, took action, to change the church system. What's it all about? 
As the failure of the Crusades and the spread of plagues, reduced the church's power, the criticism flared with the Renaissance. The church intimidated it with witch hunting, in 1503, while the church made Bramante, a great master of the Renaissance, rebuild, the Vatican Dome in Rome. The Medici's in Florence, where Pope Leo X came from, undertook the financing, and sold indulgence, for avoiding witch hunting. However, since it said, it could save even the ancestors, who landed in hell, Professor Luther of Wittenberg University, snapped at it, in 1517, as the Pope's arrogance over God. He translated the Bible into German, to change Christianity to mobile religion like Islam, and preached sola fide that, man comes into the right relation with God, only with faith, neither with the Pope's, nor with good manners. Under the influence, Calvin in Geneva, put the church into the self-government of the presbyters. He also negated, the Pope's and good manners, but adopted the predestination theory, that, only God has all decisive power. He encouraged people, to work hard at their profession, as the mission charged by God. Independently of them, Henry VIII, the King of England, got angry with the Pope, who would not allow his divorce, so that, in 1531, he took the position of the supreme head of the English Church, insisted the divine right of kings, confiscated the properties of Roman Catholics, and began his absolute monarchy. What do you think? Anyway, these were just reforms of the church system. When modern times disregarded Christianity, both Catholics and Protestants were used in politics, and fell together. Professor Suyonka, I got it well, thanks! Professor Suyonka, one minute philosophy. Hi, how do you do? Professor Suyonka, what is humanism? It is the standpoint, to observe even vulgar human nature. In the 16th century of the late Renaissance, they abandoned, empty theology, collected actual examples from the classics histories and recent cases, and examined the real figure of human beings. In addition, many people appeared, who behaved according to their greed. What's it all about? In 1511, Erasmus, even though, he was a Biblicist, published, Praise of Folly, in which, he satirized priests, royalties and scholars. Machiavelli in Florence, rather insisted on, the necessity of a cunning monarch, to survive between mighty France and Habsburg. Actually, the conquistadores, like Cortes and Pizarro, never minded vandalism, and ruined and plundered, the Aztecs in Mexico and the Inca in Peru. On the other hand, the Society of Jesus, of Roman Catholics, founded schools for general citizens, not only in Europe, but also in every part of the world, and infiltrated, the culture of the Renaissance. In the latter part of the 16th century, Montaigne, a noble of the robe in Bordeaux, wrote, the essays, and exhorted tolerance to both Catholics and Protestants, in the religious war. Also in the art field, lower priest Janikin, made comical vulgar chansons of polyphony. Bruegel, the elder and the younger in Antwerp, painted allegorical caricatures, and life pictures of folk. At the end of the century, dramatist Shakespeare in London, took subjects from history, put the tragic comedies of, human greed tactics and folly, on the stage, and, won popularity. What do you think? If a human being acts in his vulgar nature, he is no more a human being. Professor Suyonka, I got it well, thanks. Hi, how do you do? Professor Suyonka, what is scientia est potentia? Knowledge is power. It is the word of Francis Bacon. What's it all about? After Queen Elizabeth I, a distantly related King of Scotland, also served as King of England. A young lawyer, Francis Bacon, caught this opportunity, gained the confidence of the new king, who did not know England, and eventually climbed up to a great official. However in 1621, he lost his position, due to convergence. In retrospect, Bacon said, his ambition for wishing to rise up in the country, was wrong, he should have hoped for, the expansion of the empire in the world, no, we should aim for, human prosperity in the universe. According to him, 
nature follows natural law. So, if we know the law, human beings can freely use nature, by controlling the law, like the rains. In other words, nature can be ruled, by obedience. However, to do that first of all, we must rule out our four illusions, human-centered, tribe personally prejudiced, cave idola, hearsay depending, market idola, and authority crediting, theater idola. Second, we have to collect examples by observing nature, as bees do nectar from flowers. And thirdly, we squeeze these experiences into the law, by induction. He says that, the technology obtained in this way, will eventually establish a human almighty city, New Atlantis. What do you think? A stupid almighty creature, a human being, is perhaps the most troublesome being in the world. Professor Suyonka, I got it well, thanks. Rafechi-san, Sumioka, one minute, philosophy. Hi, how do you do? The Middle Ages of Europe, are called the Dark Ages. Based on the theory of original sin, the church forced people, to think nothing of themselves, obey the popes and the hierarchia, and live under the order of ora et labra, pray and work, however, why did such a miserable system endure for a millennium? After the Western Roman Empire was ruined, and they moved to the east, the Germans who had immigrated there, succeeded the fertile wheat fields. Naturally, those caused also them conflicts. Weakened kings asked the church, to endorse their power, but, on the other hand, to countervail the kings, the feudal lords donated their territories to the church, and became the owner guardians of private monasteries in the same places. Thus, the church came up as the exclusive ruler of Europe. The motto Ora et Labra, was originally for the monks. However, they are de facto, aristocrats, and never work themselves. Instead, their monasteries had many knights and peasants as nominal deacons, and they were kept, as well as horses and cows. Blessed with the fortune of the medieval warm period, their daily lives with singing dancing and drinking, were not so bad. In short, people in the Middle Ages, did not need to think about things themselves. Only following a custom, everything went well. However, when the Normans assaulted them, and for a solution, the church advocated the crusade, and when the expedition failed, and plagues were brought, their easy lives ended. They could depend on the church, no more, and some geniuses and heroes began to seek the next age themselves. The story may not be of the past. We modern day people, have lived under well-made states, but they now undergo various troubles, and they seem to have the ability to solve the problems, no more. If we do not think of ourselves, and seek the way out, we may also be thrown into confusion again. <laughs>